Hi, my name is Alex, and in this episode of Magic Missile Minis, I'm going to be sculpting another one of my commissions. In this video, I'm going to be doing a Tribal Shaman. I start by making the wire armature as normal, taking a wire, folding it in half, and then clamping it down with some pliers. I then twist out part of the wire to define the torso and separate that from the hips and legs. The character I'm going to be sculpting for this project is a tribal shaman type character that has these two ice sickles. Not like icicles as in like sickles made out of ice. Anyway, after adding the arms for the armature, I can go ahead and add a little bit of green stuff for the first layer around the entire miniature. And here you can see the pose I was going to go for, just kind of like her advancing forward with her sickles on either side. Once that sets, I can start building up the miniature a little bit, starting with the torso and also sculpting in a little bit of the legs. The design for this character seems to have a lot of like tattered cloth and clothing as uh, some kind of makeshift armor perhaps, and she also has a large fur cape or coat or something that's kind of draped around her shoulders. One of the other major details is she has this weird belt that's kind of like a loop with a bunch of tattered pieces of cloth attached to that loop that kind of wrap around her waist. So here you can see me sculpting that as well as some of the first layers of cloth that go around her chest. I then add a little bit of green stuff for what will be her loincloth kiltish kind of thing. It kind of looks like a Roman turgis, um, but made out of random bits of cloth or leather. And as well as that, I add some wraps around her forearms, sculpting in some of the folds using my rubber sculpting tools as well as my craft knife. So this character seems to have some like big fur boots that go along with the cloak that we're going to be giving her later. So to start, I add a large bit of green stuff around her calf and form out the foot of the boot a little bit before taking a needle and sculpting out the actual fur texture. And after doing the second boot as well, the green stuff we added earlier has set. So I can start adding the little bits of green stuff that are going to re represent the ripped and tattered cloth that is attached to the ring around her waist. Uh, you'll notice that I don't actually do a whole lot of these because I want to add more when I've added more layers to the kilt that she's wearing. Since the plan is to have some going around her waist, some going up a little bit onto her chest, and then some drooping down onto her thighs. Speaking of which, I start adding on some more pieces of green stuff that are going to represent the tattered leathers and cloth that form her kilt. And I go around the entirety of the hips doing this, and I'm going to actually add another layer on later to make it look like it's got several layers of tattered cloths and leathers. After adding that, you can see me here adding a little bit of green stuff and attaching a series of wires to it. These are going to act as the armature for the cloak that we're going to be adding onto it a little bit later. And while that sets, I start working on the face for the miniature, sculpting out the base shape that I'm going to add details onto later. I then add a second layer of green stuff over the kilt to create the second layer of tattered leathers that I mentioned I was going to add before. And with that done, I can add the extra little bits of material that are going to be attached to the belt that I also mentioned I was going to add earlier. I then return to the face we were sculpting and using an X-Acto knife, uh, drill some little holes into it and add some little bits of green stuff that are going to act as the eyes. While I let that set, I can start adding some more green stuff to the cloak that I mentioned we were going to be making earlier. And using my finger and some sculpting tools, I shape that into what I can see on the reference photo that I was sent. And then I can take a needle and start adding the actual texture for the fur in the same way that I did for the boots. A little tip if you're doing fur, the best way to think about it is you're trying to make individual locks of hair. You can kind of see that as I'm sculpting that I'm creating these little triangles of green stuff right next to each other and kind of moving them around to make them a little squiggly and that creates the fur texture. 
and after letting that set for a little bit, I can start adding some more details onto it. Namely being a series of bones that she seems to have uh, attached to a string that's kind of going around this cloak. And I wanted to have a focal point be kind of a big skull at the very back. And you can see me sculpting that here. Then add some more pieces of green stuff that are going to act as different smaller bones that kind of look like shoulder blades and stuff that are also going around her neck and kind of like a long, I don't know, necklace type thing that's uh, hidden underneath a fur collar that's also going to be attached to the cloak. And once I've finished all of the bones, I add the actual necklace or lace that is attaching it. I then start working on the sickles that I mentioned she had. Because of how thin and small they were, I didn't feel the need to sculpt them on a separate base and make them out of milliput. Instead, I just changed the shape of the wires that are already attached to where her hands are going to be and add some green stuff to that to sculpt out the main shape for these sickles, as you can see me doing here. And while I let that set, I continue to work on the face that I had been making before, starting by sculpting the eyelids for this figure. Once that's where I like it, I go back to the main miniature and sculpt some more clothing that goes around her chest and is going to attach to a fur collar, sculpting that with some of my rubber sculpting tools to create the folds in the cloth. Then of course adding more green stuff to create the collar that we just mentioned, sculpting that in the same way that we sculpted the boots and cloak to give it a nice fur texture. Then really quickly just add the nose and mouth to this miniature. And while that sets, give the miniature some hands. Once I've let the green stuff on the face set, I can remove that with my craft knife and move on to attach that to the miniature itself. After giving that a little time to set, I can start sculpting the hair. The character in the design has some very messy hair, so that's kind of what I'm trying to go for. Adding individual locks of hair to create the main shape and then giving it texture later on. As you can kind of see here, I also gave her one little strand of hair going in front of her face, which is going to really help add the kind of messy hair feel. Once that's finished, I can add a couple smaller details like the back side of the cloak that we had added, as well as adding some little ice shards to the ice sickles as per the art that I'm referencing. With those final details, the miniature itself is finished and all that needs is a prime and a paint. Here you can see the sculpt itself without any of the primer. And here is the miniature after it's been primed with Citadel Colors Chaos Black. And now we can get to painting the miniature. I start by painting a sickly brown onto all of the leather and her pants. The specific color I'm using is a mixture of Vallejo's model color flat brown as well as a little bit of their black, a little bit of their white, and a little bit of Model Colors refractive green as well. Adding the little bit of refractive green to the brown helps make it not quite so vibrant and warm. And adding the black and white grays out the color so it's not quite as saturated. I then move on to paint the fur cloak that we had made which is a mixture of white, as well as a little bit of yellow ochre, and a touch of the flat brown that we used before, using that same color for the fur on her boots. I take that same color, but adding a little bit of white to paint some of the wraps on her torso. However, with the rest of the clothing, I go over it with a purple, which again is Vallejo model color, and it's just their standard purple using that color for the clothing around her chest as well as the wraps that are attached to her belt and the little pieces of tattered material. Also, I use it for the wraps that we had sculpted around her forearms. I then move on to paint all of the bones that we had made around the cloak. And that's a mixture of white as well as Vallejo model colors buff color. I then also base coat the sickles in a light blue. And this is using Vallejo model colors azure color and this is actually one of my favorite colors to paint with and once both of them are base coated i add a little bit of black and start creating a gradient on them i'm planning on using some of the techniques i use in my nmm video to make them feel like they're kind of icy so once i've created a gradient i can add some white edge highlighting around the entire thing i also create some gradients with the white and do some dry brushing to get all of the little bits that i had added before the little ice shards so that they also have some white on them 
I also do a little bit of dry brushing in white over all of the bones that we had painted beforehand. And I also paint the face using a little bit of the same white that we have used this entire video, as well as Vallejo model colors flat flesh. I also add a base coat of brown onto our hair, being just the flat brown that we've been using throughout the video as well. And once that's dry, I add a little bit of white to the flat brown and do some dry brushing over the top of it so that you can see the texture of the hair more clearly. I then add a little bit of contour to her face, and I do this by adding a little bit of the flat brown and a little bit of the azure of all things to the flesh tone that we had made. And this basically helps make the figure look kind of cold and almost like there's no color to her face. And as you can see me doing here, I start to paint the other details like the eyes and the eyebrows. And then to finish the miniature off, I go over everything except for the sickles with a wash. More specifically, Agrax Earthshade, which is one of Citadel's brown washes that creates a nice dirty feel, especially for like the things like the bones and the cloak. Thank you so much for watching that video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell. That kind of stuff really helps the channel grow. If you have any questions or video suggestions, leave them in the comments below. But once again, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.